Hey guys, still here. Sometimes in Red Dragon you just want something different. You've been through all the decks, you want to play something a bit more challenging, and you're in a group of friends, you decide to go for a 4v4, and you think, hey, you know what? Let's all go Anzac. That's exactly what Dangerous Carrier, Papa Smurf, Raven in Blue, and Flying Carrot have decided to do. This is Plunge in Valley, 4v4. And this means that with those four Anzac decks, they are lacking in high-end tanks. Some of the best tanks are not available. You don't have 22 frontal armor, you don't have a 23 AP gun. This is going to hurt your push ability. You're going to have to come up with different tactics in order to make it through to the other side of the map. And seeing as this is destruction, it is about killing. So having a super heavy to do some killing would be very handy. But they're going to have to figure out some other way to do that. Now we're going to be following Dangerous Carrier over here. He's opening up on the left. He's starting out with a couple of Vickers Mark 11. We have a Unimog with Command Infantry inside, a Tracked Rapier, a couple of Stollies as transports for the infantry. And he's still adding some units here. We have some uh, M113A1s with miniguns to deal with further infantry and to transport infantry as they see fit. Now being a destruction match, it is, um, it, well at least it has the potential to become more campy when compared to conquest. If you camp in conquest, you're not going to get any points if you're behind. If you camp in destruction, you can just stall the game like that. But don't worry, that is not what's gonna be happening in this game. These guys are working together very well and it's not going to go too well all the time, but in the end, they managed to get a pretty impressive result with a bunch of Anzac decks. So let's see how they get that done. Now, since the deployment phase is usually not too fascinating, let's speed this up. There we go. Let's see if the Anzac know how to drive a little better than the Russians in one of those games that I put up previously. And it seems like, nope. The game logic, of course, is the same for all units. Their pathfinding is equally terrible, and it doesn't matter whether you have an intersection or not, because you can just drive across the road or the open terrain as you're a wheeled vehicle. So he's just immediately cutting across this open section, joining up on the next road, and trying to make his way to this town as quickly as possible. Now, the Anzac deck has its strengths. It has some really good infantry. It also has its weaknesses. No super heavy tanks. Does not really get any uh, long range ATGM units, at least not in the infantry department. And those units could be especially interesting and very helpful defending the southern end of this zone in Alpha here. So he's going to have to figure out something else. Some other way of doing this. The Vickers are immediately pushed into these woods. And as these are wheeled vehicles, they are much more likely to arrive soon than, for example, enemy tank. Not that enemy tank would race them here, but the Vickers are at least going to be in position potentially in a moment when the enemy does not expect them to be, so that you might be able to catch some units as they're coming down to the south of Alpha unaware. And that's when these Vickers really shine. These are not tanks, mind you. The way that I consider them are skirmish units. They're fast. They even have amphibious capability at 50 kph, which means that they are some of the fastest amphibious units out there. Really accurate gun, really good AP, decent rate of fire, virtually no armor. So they're a skirmish unit, dealing some damage to lightly defended targets, such as a bunch of AA guns. SFL 57.2s and 23.4s are a potentially easy target there. And you can see that as they're taking HGM fire, they're quickly ducking back into cover. Having done some damage, you can see this SFL took some damage here, but not actually losing any of their hit points or any of the Vickers yet. Now he's defended this town heavily. We have 20 SASR sitting in two buildings next to each other. NZ SAS are spotting in the front line, but they really don't have any way to reach out and touch them, at least not yet. Note how he's deployed some Stollies over here. These are pretty much tripwire units, meaning that if some enemy unit happens to get close, they are going to get killed off. And this is going to be your one and only warning that you may have units flanking around these woods and coming into the side of Echo. 
So make sure you always have some units deployed as uh, flank defenders. Now the assault pioneers were trying to get to these structures. Unfortunately not quite getting there as the middle of the map has somewhat collapsed. And this means that they are now taking HGM fire from the units that are sitting inside these tree lines. So it's not safe for the miniguns to move up. The assault pioneers seem hesitant, especially after losing five of their guys to one shot from this unit, which I don't believe is a particularly heavily armed unit, but it has managed to wipe out one of the squads so far. SPW 40A comes in, trying to rush this position. It's a recon unit, only armed with machine gun, so the Vicar should have no problem chewing through it. But they have some further issues to be concerned about, as on the front line here, we have the Wach Regiment, which is rushing in. Helicopters in support, as well as the 23-4s. Not fantastic anti-vehicle units or anti-infantry, but at a thousand meter range, they can deliver a lot of suppression fire for the SASR, as the other infantry might be able to move up. Fortunately, the Wach Regiment died before they were able to do some of their suppressive damage. And so far, the Helos are not making a push, whereas they could easily wipe out the SASR with the rocket pods, or at least make life very complicated for them. Now, let's see how the right flank is doing. The right flank has managed to capture the forward buildings here. This is good news. They have a Leopard AS-1, correction, they had a Leopard AS-1 Plus here which was laying down suppressive fire on transports, making sure that Red had a harder time rushing this position. And you can already see the disparity between Blue and Red here. Um, the Leopard AS-1 Plus is one of the best tanks that the Anzac can field, whereas the T-80B would be a comparison. Uh, this is not even halfway near the heaviest tank that Red Fork can field. So Mestari could put up quite a fight here, especially keeping the fight at range with HGMs and tanks would make it quite difficult for Anzac to come back from that push. Now, seeing as the middle of the map has collapsed, we have to bring in some reinforcements, and that's what Dangerous Carrier is doing. He's deployed some Commandos 90 here, also tries to have the Vickers help out, which are immediately getting suppressed by further HGM fire. A couple of Topaz 2 APs are coming in, right into the open arms of the Carl Gustav of the commandos here. Unfortunately there is further resistance here. 14 Nibiski Beretti. And not just that, we also have transports and another Nibiski Beretti group. So we're gonna need some further suppressive damage here to deal with these infantry units. Fortunately, more commandos have arrived. Raven in Blue kills off the other transport as the commandos here are laying down suppressive fire on the Nibiskis. Accuracy is the same for both units. 47 whereas these guys cannot fire that RPK on the move. So, so far the commandos seem to be holding their own, but they can still use quite a bit of reinforcements here. On the left flank, not a lot of activity going on. The SASR is still perfectly holding on to their structures. We have a T55AM1PP getting sniped by the Vickers there. The Vickers are now looking for a shot on either these or these AA guns. Managed to kill off one of the SFL 57-2s. Recharges, reloads, and there is two missing shots from these guys. Come on, you can do better. 70% accuracy. Go kill them. There you go. Now these are not priority units, absolutely not, but any kill is a kill in destruction. So if you can get these units basically for free, then by all means do so. Surprisingly, it seems that the guy commanding these units is either not paying attention to this flank or not actively managing these units because they are not being withdrawn to a safer position. So these Vickers could still have easily wiped out both of these units, but they get off easily. And so far the NZSCS are still spotting them. One of the Vickers that was stuck in the mud and he might be waiting for the other Vickers to get ready to go. Now the middle of the map is holding on, and the right flank is actually making some progress. We are moving up with a couple of Norforce from Papa Smurf on the right, and we have control of these woods. It's just that there are a lot of assault pioneers. And while these guys may open up with their flamethrower against the tank, the tank is not going to be awfully impressed by that display. So they're going to need some further infantry units that can actually do a lot of damage against tanks. 
before they're going to be able to make any progress here. Now, so far, the scores are 1,000 for red four, sorry for blue four versus 485 for red four. Red four at this point managed to get one of the vickers killed off, but not before that vickers has done a significant amount of damage. And we have further helicopters coming back, potentially having been rearmed at the fob. Let's see if the track trip here can get any kills on that. Looks like they might be just outside of range. Now with all of this steel division that I've been doing or covering, it's very tempting for me to click on this unit and hold down the C button to see the line of fire and the range circles, but unfortunately that is not in Wargame and I doubt very much that it's going to get introduced. So we're just going to have to uh, estimate the ranges for now. A couple of light shoots and have been deployed. This is bad news for the Vickers, as these guys also carry medium range anti-tank weaponry and can pose quite a threat to these units. So far though, they seem to be hell-bent on rushing up to the SASR, which are already entrenched in the building. Helos are trying to assist here, but two missiles from the track trip here wipes them both out as they were operating too closely together and they crash in close proximity to each other. At this point the NZSES also open up with their machine guns but we have further issues. The T-55s are pushing up and this is going to be a potential issue as the NZSES are only armed with the M72 Law which is not a very good anti-tank weapon. It is really poorly at aiming. 30% accuracy, range is terrible. So the real answer that we have to the T-55s is the Vickers. Are you seriously going to get that close? Yes, they're seriously going to get that close. They managed to get one hit and the Vickers kills off another one. Anzac SCS reload. Come on guys. And the Vickers wipes out the second one. Interestingly, this guy is not using smoke screens to conceal his approach or to use his artillery to suppress the units that are currently hiding in here. Because these units are always going to get a very good field of fire. It's very easy to overwatch this entire field with these units over here. So, so far, um, this guy, and I don't read Russian very well, so I don't know what his username is. He's just feeding points and dangerous carrier is happily soaking up the points. And meanwhile, the front line here in the middle is still being held. In fact, we're trying to make progress with a whole bunch of diggers. There's just one transport there, so so far not too much resistance. But I wonder what else Red 4 might have hiding in these woods. There we go. A whole bunch of infantry. A transport. A second transport. Scots, a third one. The miniguns are trying to get some suppressive damage in, but it's finally the diggers that take them out. Now the diggers are armed with the M72A4 law, which is slightly more accurate, 40%, and has more than enough AP to deal with these transports. But especially the accuracy becomes an issue. And you can see that the accuracy of these units at the moment is about 25 to 30%. Normally that would be 40, but they are being panicked by all the suppressive fire that's coming down on them. So unfortunately they're not making as much progress with those anti-tank weapons as hoped. And so far they're just duking it out against a couple of Nibiski Berettis. But note that it's just one group that was firing. If you have a situation like this, make sure you use command attack move to get closer to these units. Otherwise you have, for example, just four out of these 25 diggers firing at the enemy. With the other two groups standing by and watching their brothers go down. So make sure you get into range with all of the groups. Seems that the right flank has taken some napalm. So far the NZSES and the commandos have survived, but that's about all you can say. These guys have fired almost all their anti-tank weapons. Um, they're down to, well, according to the game, two guys, but it seems that according to the hit point counter, it's just one. So it doesn't really take that much to t wipe these guys out. And on the right flank we have the assault pioneers. Um, I think that the commandos may have been able to take out the tank, considering that they fired a couple of Carl Gustav M2 charges. And this means that it's going to be difficult for Red 4 to rush into this position again with further armor, or transports for that matter, as they're going to get wiped out pretty quickly. For further assistance we have the Aslav 25 with a couple of Bushmasters. 
yep, we have another rush coming in. Not well enough, though. Let's have these Aslav 25s do some work. Now, this is what I really like about um, the Anzac deck. It's really, really fast. And especially the Bushmaster on these vehicles is really nice. 25% stabilizer, 50% accuracy when sitting still. And they're really cheap. 25 points. To add to that, they have medium stealth and good optics, and they're amphibious, and they have really good off-road speed. So, these are the ideal reconnaissance units. And yes, armor is uh, a luxury that these things don't have. But that's not really the intent of them. They're moving from cover to cover, quickly scouting, dashing out some damage, and basically withdrawing before the enemy has any chance to strike at them. And this is what exactly they did here. Killed off a couple of transports, killed an AA gun, looking for some infantry there, killed off the infantry. Second group of infantry appears. Oh dear. Oh, close range, managed to get the kill. Aslav still turning around. Dashing all over the place. Another SFL 57-2 wipes out one of the Aslavs. Ooh. Fortunately, the other SFL is not too accurate. Yep, managed to get the kill, but only one is down to one hit point. Now, the middle of the map sees a T-72 M1 Wilk. This is going to be a potential problem, because at short range, it's going to be difficult for... Or, it's difficult to get your infantry to short range. But the Aslav 25 Toe 2 was able to take out this unit very quickly, very easily. Time to get some more valued kills. The Niwa M1T is standing by. 95 points up for grabs there. Commanders are currently only firing at it with their Minimi. And this thing does not have any armor. But it would make a lot more sense if you just close in and wipe it out with an anti-tank round. And, oh, there's more anti-tank, or more anti-air. A Flakom Tor. That's another 80 points that they're just having sitting there. And thank you very much for the tar Star 266 resupply vehicle. SG-25K tries to come in close. I'm not exactly sure what he was hoping to do. Maybe fire off those S-24B rockets. But that is another 140 points down the drain. And so far, surprisingly, Red 4 has not managed to reinforce these structures. So despite the fact that Red 4 did an initial and very effective push here... They have not been able to hold on to the terrain. And they have not invested in making this uh, structure or these buildings over here a stronghold. Because you can really turn this into a difficult position. Using, for example, HGM units, uh, a bit of AA infantry, reconnaissance. It's going to be really difficult to get the enemy out of that position once they have it. Now the left flank has seen virtually no action so far. And in case there is further action, especially with tanks, we have the Aslav 25 Toe 2, which is standing by with very accurate and hard-hitting Toe 2 missiles to deal with any tank that might get the idea of rushing into this position. So at the moment, most action takes place on the right flank here. And, to, what the hell? Towards the middle of the map, I was going to say where the commandos have moved up completely unchallenged and are currently working their way through command infantry which has been supposedly completely undefended. I'm not exactly sure what the hell is going on here but this is a pretty huge oversight by Red 4 not defending their command infantry. And they are just outside of machine gun range here. Looks like we may have some potential problems rushing in. Looks like a Scott comes in. Hoping to drop off infantry close to the commandos. And if they can get that done, then the commandos are in for a surprise. That's an OT tab 71. Come on. Nope. Pedobranchi already offloaded. Commandos against six Pedobranchi is going to be quite a stretch. Even when these Pedobranchi are already weakened. Fortunately, we have a Vickers Mark 11 from Flying Carrot that's narrowly managed to save the commandos here. Further commandos coming up for reinforcements, and if they can get these positions for themselves and reinforce with AGGMs, 
then it's going to be difficult for red to come out of their spawn zone. Of course, they still have this road, which means that Papa Smurf on the right here still has a plethora of targets and a lot of stuff to kill off. Looks like, unfortunately, those reconnaissance units, the Aslav 25s, have been taken out. And so have all of his infantry units over here. The NZSCS has died off. And the Stolly is now gone, meaning that the Minkati just got captured. One further unit of reinforcement comes in. It's going to be difficult to hold on to a position like that, especially against those B, uh, was it BVP or BWP 80s, which have a really punchy autocannon. Mirage 110 comes in, trying to drop off some bombs here. Let's see if he can get any hits. Potentially on the infantry. There we go, the Proletaria now rushing up. Duking it out with the commandos at very short range. At which point, I think the commandos are going to win the fight. Even if there's a T-55 coming in, T-55 is easily going to get taken up by the Carl Gustav. Now, they have been able to secure Alpha. I think that Red Force has just withdrawn their own command unit here. For some reason or another. I don't see any threat here from Dangerous Carrier. So he's not that dangerous. And I'm not really sure why this guy has been retreating his command vehicle. Maybe it's one of the guys on Red Force just trolling. I don't know. He's just so upset with his own team that, I don't know, he decided to move out command vehicles just to grief his own team. I mean, it's war games, so anything's possible. You never know what these guys are up to. Now, interestingly, the Mankati 6x6 is still there. It hasn't actually been moved from its previous position where Red Fork captured it. So Blue has been able to recapture it. And Raven's immediately rushing that thing back. Uh, of course, he cannot gift it to... Um, I think it was Papa Smurf's unit initially. But so far, at least this forward forest is back under their control. The Commandos, surprisingly still alive. And the Vickers Mark 11 quickly dashing inside and outside of the town. Dealing with units as they come in. But they weren't able to deal with the infantry before they managed to come in here. A good team play here. The Assault Pioneers now take up the front line. And with their flamethrower, they're able to very quickly lay down a lot of suppressive fire on these Potograncia as they're coming in. Further Commandos and SASR are holding this line. Potograncia completely stunned from all of the fire that's coming down on them. And even this one Commando with his machine gun is trying to do some damage. And we have a T-55 Dyna-1 coming in. Yeah, that'll work. F-111C. That will do quite a bit of damage. So much for the transport. The Dyna-1 is armed with a long-range ATGM, the Arcan. It's a very fast ATGM at that. So dashing out with the Vickers is not going to be the answer here. You're going to have to wait for that thing to get into range of potentially your own Aslav HGM, so the Toe 2. Or you may want to bring in some HGM infantry here. Now it looks like Mistari and Killer B Mofo just left the game, so we just have the Russian, and he also surrendered, leaving just Erebus. Now Erebus has scored 334 points, which is the most points that his team has scored so far. And let's see where he's operating. Is this him? No, that's Mistari. I'm not sure where Erebus has been operating, but he's been able to get a few kills, so it's not the left. Talking of the left, it looks like he might be considering pushing up here. Dangerous carrier. Smoking over this position, making sure that this position is blinded so that it either can be pushed into or cannot lay down suppressive fire on units as they're pushing up. But I think that Airbus 248 is going to be plenty busy as is. And so far, I gotta say Anzac, um, four Anzac decks. Normally you'd say, well, how difficult can that be? How much fire can they really lay down together? Well, you'd be surprised. In an urban map like this, they can do quite a bit of damage, as you have seen. And it's, of course, not just urban. Open terrain is more difficult for them to move up to. But the way that it seems to be working best for uh, the Anzac is to do very quick dashes. 
Stollies are fast, Aslav 25 Tow 2s are fast, the Aslav Recons are fast, Vickers are very fast, and yes, these units don't have a lot of armor. That is their biggest weakness. So if you have units which can deal with quick units, uh, you can go, for example, for helicopters. Those are going to be more difficult to counter because they are uh, more likely to quickly ambush the fast movers from the Anzac and are more likely to get some kills. But so far, Anzac has done really, really well for themselves, so don't discount them as a deck. And yes, they may not be fully competitive, and a combination of Commonwealth is probably better, but as I mentioned at the start of this video, it is just sometimes you want to play something different. You're fed up with all of the standard decks or the competitive decks or the decks that you've been playing time and time again. You think, you know what, I'm just going to go for Anzac or any of the other weird combinations of, uh, I don't know, German Airborne or uh, French Motorized. I mean, French Motorized is still pretty viable, but you know what I mean. Just trying to go with different combinations. Good bombing run there by the F-111C. And, well, let's face it, this game is pretty much over as it is. Aslav currently engaged in a duel with the Dyna. Dyna seems to have lost line of sight. Arcan reloading. Nope. Yep, it is firing. Aslav dashes into cover, narrowly avoids the ATGM. And we have a Kahu flying over and actually getting the kill there. Another kill for a dangerous carrier. I'm going to speed this up a bit because this game is pretty much in its wrap-up phases. There's not really that much going on in these final moments. As I'm not even sure Erebus is still actively controlling most of these units. I'm not sure there is a lot of these units left, actually. Yeah, exactly. Just one bit of command infantry. A couple of units over here, so let's just skip to the end. Have a look at the Overwatch and uh, results screen. Sorry, overview, not overwatch. Commandos flanking, Aslav's PC flanking, and there's the command vehicle. Killed off. So, dangerous carrier. 1,605 points killed off, 145 points in losses. To be fair, the guy that he was facing was not the best player. This guy um, definitely had some room for improvement in his tactics. But still, it's just an Anzac deck. They are not particularly heavily armored, and that is something that you can use against them. The other guys were not really doing that well either. Killer B, Mistari, Erebus. I'm not exactly sure what they were doing, but I think that they can definitely improve their gameplay. Anyway, that's it for this gameplay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are, and what kind of crazy decks you like to play as a change of pace from your usual high-end decks. Looking forward to seeing your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon.